Today we're going to work on one of my favourite projects and what we're going to do is we're going to create a resist bowl. Um, this one's illuminated. I'm going to turn off the light so you can see it a little better. So there it is, it's illuminated nicely and what you can see is the fibres showing through it because it's been made quite fine. And inside it we've got some string lights which um, you could open up. Uh, it looks lovely at Christmas. A few of these glowing on the mantelpiece so it's a really nice thing to make. I'm going to put the light back on. There we are. So this is the resist that's going to go in the centre of our work and this one is 14 centimetres wide but you can make it bigger. I wouldn't go any smaller than that. And the resist, I use um, some oven liner and it's recyclable and you can use it again and again. This has been used several times. It's nice and thin so that when you actually take it out, you can crinkle it up and um, it's good to work with. So you can buy that online quite easily or at the local shops. So that's the resist that's going to go in the centre of our picture. And I've got a nice selection of wool and fibres to work with. So I've got some pewter here. Um, some mulberry colour, some teal and the basis for the bowl which is again the oyster. Now I use a very light colour for the background because that means that the fibres will show through nicely. I've also got for a bit of zesty colour some citrus mulberry silk and some nice magenta mulberry silk and I've got some um, quite bright sari silk here so that the fibres will look beautiful on that. And I've got some hand dyed curly locks here, all nice complementary colours. And this is the Angelina fibre, which I'll show you later. So let's move those out of the way. So I've got my bamboo mat at the bottom, and then the bubble wrap, and then the resist circle. So I'm going to take the Oyster Mulberry Silk and just working in small amounts, very lightly, I'm going to pull it out and place it on the resist so it's about an inch from the edge at the outside. And I'm just going to put it on all the way around, a bit like a cartwheel. There we go. You can see it's starting to cover the resist. And when the resist is black like this, it's also good because um, you can see what you're putting on easily. There we go. Just being quite careful and pulling it out very lightly. Because if you make this wool too heavy, the light won't shine through. So there we are. It's covered there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray it with a solution of soap flakes and water just in... Uh, I think this is an old, um, I don't know, some, some sort of bottle that I had in the kitchen, which I'm going to use as a sprayer. So I'm just going to spray it all over, around the edges as well. I know previously I've used netting, but this time, because I don't want the fibres to move too much at all, I'm going to use um, bubble wrap on the top as well. I'm just going to gently stroke it. You only need to do it for a few seconds. And then take up the top layer of the bubble wrap. And what we're going to do is flip over the resist and the wool that we've put on it. So just very carefully flip it over like that. And what we can do is we can then turn all these edges in. Can you see that? So they're just because we only put them slightly outside the circle, and um, they're turning in quite nicely. There we are, just flattening it out as I go. I'm going to put a little bit more water on there just to stick it down a bit. There we are. And you've covered one side lightly, so now it's time to cover the other side. So exactly the same, just going round in that circular shape. And we're going to put two layers on each side, and that'll be quite enough. 
you could go for any light colour for this base but from experience I wouldn't go for anything dark there we are and again the soap solution This is some soap I've had in the bottle for a while, so it doesn't even need to be warm. There we are. And on with the bubble wrap. That should be, yes, there we go. So we flatten that again. Just a few seconds, exactly the same as before. Being careful to leave the fibres on the the table rather than take them up with the bubble wrap and we're going to flip it over again quite carefully and tuck in all these spare fibres that were around the edge. Now the edge of the resist when you make your bowl that's going to be the side of it and then you're going to decide whether the top or the bottom is going to be the, the um, top or bottom of your actual pot. So the second layer now. And you might think that this pot's going to be really flimsy, but what I actually do is I make a solution of fabric glue and water once it's made and cover it with that, and that gives it strength and rigidity. using this doesn't disturb the fibres very much and then you don't end up putting too much liquid on. There we are. And just a quick rub again. And then we're going to do the final side. You can see it's starting to cover nicely there. You can still see the resist inside. There we are. Turn over all these fibres. It's quite a therapeutic working on this. And I'm going to add the final layer of the merino wool. So again, this is oyster. You could use white or anything like that. I use the merino because it's very fine and it lays flat and it's good to work with. You don't want to use anything that's too wiry for this. Also felts very well. That's a nice covering on the final side. Quick squirt of the soap solution. And the edges, lovely, and flip it over. So our resist is really encased in the wool now. It's a good technique because you can use it to make handbags and pots and all sorts of things. Even things like slipper socks. Put a little bit more on there. Going to smooth it over and then we're going to add some fibres to our pot. Yeah, it's nice and smooth and it's damp. So I'm just going with the pewter here. If I start putting this all over then you're going to make your pot too dark. So what we're going to do is we're just going to pull out some little bits and twist them and then you can create a pattern. It's good to go over the edges again so you haven't got a line around the, the side of the pot. So I'm just taking bits of pewter and quite randomly adding it to the design. Now this is going to be the top and 
there's going to be a hole in the top so to make the hole I normally use um, the top of a, a milk bottle so I'm just going to have a look where the top's going to be so I've just made a little imprint and you can see it there so I'm going to go around the outside of that so quite a contemporary pattern coming here you can do it as swirls or anything you like now let's go I'll we'll put a double one there I think This has got a little bit of angelina fibre mixed with it as well. There we are. And then I'm going to go from some of my magenta. And mulberry, I think it was. There we are. I've got a few swirls on there. You can just go mad and do whatever designs you like. Because it, it will look very different when it's... Um, wet felted as well teal just pulling it out stretching those fibers out and you've got this lovely very sort of bright purple and this is the mulberry silk so I'm just going to put that on the mulberry, felt, the mulberry silk just felt so beautifully. It doesn't take, and it goes a lovely zigzaggy effect as well. One of my favourite fibres to work with. So, very ra random design. You certainly don't need to be an artist to do this. There we go, that's my mulberry silk. And I'm going to go for this quite zingy green as well, just to add a bit of impact to it. I think I might just twirl it a little bit. This nice citrus colour. and go for a little bit of the sari silk now if you've seen my videos before you'll know that the fibers in these are beautiful so you've got all sorts of different colors i'm just going to lay those on and then when the light shines through they'll really show up beautifully it's just being very very um li uh, not liberal um just a little bit on there we are And I'm hoping that these curly locks will stick. So that's really lovely. It's got lots of nice colours in there. And we're going to go over the side a little bit with that one. And I've got some more here. Just trying to make complementary colours together. Don't need to put too much on. There we are. That's quite pretty. I'm going to go for some of this brown sort of rusty colour as well. Just cutting little bits out. Quite like the way you've got the tendrils on that one. That's going there. And one more on this side. Put a few there. And just so they do stick down hopefully we could Add just a little bit of wool over the top of them. So a little bit more of this pinky colour. And even some of the mulberry silk. Yeah. And a little bit over here as well. Just to try and stick it. So I've got quite a nice random pattern there. And um, some of them go over the sides as well. Let's just put a bit more of the sari silk on. There we are. So back on with bubble wrap. As soon as we've put some more solution on. It's not moving around too much, which is good. There we are. And I'm just going to 
gently stroke it so the fibres don't move too much. A bit like we did with the base. Take it off very, very carefully. And I'm going to flip it over. So that's going to be the top of the design. It's feeling quite damp now. I'm going to flip over all these little loose fibres. So they're going over the side of the pot now. And then we can put a really random design on. We don't need to have the, the circle in the middle because we're not cutting into this side at all. And it'll actually be on the bottom, so you don't need to be too, too careful with this one. Go over the sides again a little bit. So I'm just going really quickly. You can spend a lot more time being more careful with your design if you want to. Just to give you the general idea of what we're doing and I'm going to try and anchor some of these curly locks as well with this. There we are. So I've just gone for colours that I like that will match my house. So if you've got a particular room in the house then have a look at the colours that you've got. There we are. Just going very very quickly to give you a general idea of what we're doing. I'm not going to put any curly locks on the bottom because we're not really going to see it very much. Let's just go with a few bits of the Morby silk. And I've done this at workshops and we've, when we've got everybody's lined up together, they look absolutely beautiful. It's quite a favourite workshop at Christmas. And there we are, it's nice green. I'm going to go quite straight with this one, I think. Whoops, caught. There, just a very, very quick design on the bottom. Finally, I'm going to take my Angelina fibre here, a bit like Rumpel Skilt Skin with his gold, and because it doesn't stick particularly well, I'm just going to cut some little bits off so you've got it as a glitter over the work. Can you see that? It's just adding a little bit of sparkle. There we are. Need those fibres anymore. Just give it a little bit of a squirt. I like the way it's got the shine on it. Smooth it over. There we are. And take it off gently. Fit in a lot of colour schemes, this I think. Taking over these edges on this side. And as I didn't put any Angelina on this side, I'm just going to add a little bit here. So you get lots of lovely colours in this. So that'll add some lovely sparkle. There we are. Still I've got that circle in the middle. And now we need to spend a little bit longer rubbing it so that the fibres start to knit together. I'm just going to rub it gently to begin with and then we can be a lot rougher in all directions. Keep going with that. Over back on the other side. I'm just going to stop for now. Keep going with this for about 10 minutes. Just that this time I haven't been using any fulling tools or rollers or anything like that. So we'll have a look how it's getting on. So there we are. The the fibres have started to stick a little bit. It's nowhere near there yet, but it's all sticking nicely. There we are, it's looking quite pretty, the pattern. And what you'll notice is some of the fibres have started to move around a little bit, especially the curly wool there. 
and you can see the little kinks that you've got in the mulberry silk so it's rather nice right so what we're going to do now and one of the reasons why we've got the bamboo mat is we're going to roll it in a towel so i've just got the two pieces of bubble wrap still and the bamboo mat underneath and an old favorite i've got some pipe insulation here you don't really need it what you can do is you can just make a little bit of a roll of bubble wrap before you start like this but i find that it's easier to roll if you've got this pipe insulation very cheap to buy so i'm rolling the whole lot together and also it means that the actual felt isn't too tightly rolled as well when you've got this i don't bother with elastic bands or anything like that what i'm going to do now i've got this roll is I'm going to get a towel and I'm going to roll it and wrap it up in the towel. I think this towel's seen better days, but never mind. Right, so there it is on the towel. Put it over the top, roll it quite tightly, like that, and I'm going to give it 20 rolls. One, two. Remember that whichever way you roll, that's the way that your wool will shrink. So it's just had a, a few rolls there. I'm going to turn it, so we're, we're doing it in four directions. Towel over the top and then continue to roll it like that. it again and as it shrinks the wool will shrink but the resist won't shrink inside so the resist will start to crumple up a little bit and that will give you a good indication that it's getting um that your wool's shrinking and it's becoming ready These, not just for Christmas, they'd be lovely for Diwali, any, any festivals really. the milk top before we're going to use that again to make the imprint again that we've got where the lid's going to go so I'd say that's pretty much central I'm going to press down quite hard so we've got the imprint and I found that this is just a really good size and I've got a little pair of very sharp embroidery scissors here and not cutting through the resist we're just going to cut through the wool so I'm going to go try and get all the way down to the resist so I'm there now look you can see the black coming through so using that imprint I'm going to very carefully cut around you can see the fibres are still moving so it's not quite ready so this is going to be the hole in the, the top of the um, pot so I'm trying to make it as neat as I possibly can That's why we didn't put a lot of fibres in the middle. There we are. Take your time, don't rush this. And be very careful not to go through the resist. It has been known on workshops and people say, oh, I've gone all the way through, not only through the top and the resist, but the bottom as well, which um, was a bit of a problem for the pot, but we managed to rectify it. There we are. Just cut those stray fibres that I can see there 
We don't want stray fibres coming out of the pot. There we are. Ooh, there's a few there, look. Just cut those off. Anyway, so I've got quite a nice straight edge there. And what I'm going to do is just try to massage that slightly. A few more stray fibres, which we don't want. Right, so you've only been rolling it for a little while there. So what we're going to do is we're going to complete the rolling process. I want you to do it for about 40 rolls on each side. All right, so I'm going to get on with that and that will allow you to do the same. So on again with the bubble wrap, roll it up in the pipe insulation, roll it up in the towel. Be quite vigorous with the rolling because if you're too gentle, the fulling process won't happen. So I'm going to give it 40 rolls on each of the four sides. Now I've rolled it 40 times in four directions, so it's had 160 rolls. And if you look at the pot, you can see that it's starting to curl a little bit. Now, this is the bit where you've got to be particularly careful. So I'm going to go in through the hole of the pot and I'm going to try and just hook the edge of the resist without moving this hole that we've got here. I'm going to try and keep that intact. So I'm just being very, very careful, trying to manipulate the um, resist inside so that it folds and it's going to come out through the hole. So that's why it's so good to get um, a resist that's flexible. You can just use um, quite sturdy plastic. Now, can you see how I'm just concertinering the resist here as it comes out? There we are. So quite a big resist has come out through there. And I'm just going to pat it. Now, if we rolled this without stopping regularly, what would happen is the top of the bowl, now that the resist has gone, will stick to the base under here, which is what we don't want to happen. But we still want to give it a little bit more of a roll. So I'm just going to give it about 20 rolls again. And I'll show you what you're going to do. So it's very ready to roll up. There we go. Unwrap it. And then what we'll do to stop it sticking is just go around the edge inside like that. Just to release any fibres that have started sticking together. Okay, there's still some loose fibres in there which we don't want. I'm going to cut those off. And with the scissors, hiding as usual. Aha, there we go. Right, so I'm just going to cut that bit off. Yeah, so keep rolling. So do that again, um, all four directions, about 20 rolls in each direction. Remembering to release um, the fibres each time so that they don't stick. So I've continued rolling. I'm just feeling inside there like that. It's feeling far more sturdy and the fibres inside have started to felt as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and give it a little rinse under the tap to get rid of the, the soap that's in there and tap it dry but keep it damp and come back to you. So I've rinsed the felt and I've squeezed out as much water as I can. I'm just going to pat it dry a little bit. So at the moment the bowl's looking very 2D, all right? It's not looking much like a bowl. So what we're going to do is I'm going to get a, a soup spoon, which is quite nice because it's got this nice um, concave um, edge here. And I'm going to use that. You could use an ice cream scoop as well, which works just as well. And carefully, I'm just going to slot it inside the bowl in the hole that we made. 
and I'm going to start pressing the palm of my hand against the spoon inside so the heat on the felt as well will help it make its shape and you'll notice that as we start doing this the bowl miraculously starts to take on a 3D shape. Look at that, that's only been um, three or four little twists and straight away we're getting this really nice shape. Now what I don't want is this crease around here. So I'm going to continue working the bowl like that using the heat of my hand against the spoon inside, putting quite a lot of pressure on there. You see? becoming quite round and 3D there, it's looking nice. And the fibres have stuck very nicely as well. I've got a few stray Angelina, but that doesn't matter. So really going to sort of go over that crease, really rubbing it against my hand, because we don't want the crease there. And as you do this, the felt will be drying as well. So I'm going to continue working on this for the next 10 minutes. If you do the same as well. Don't worry if you've got a few fibres which are coming off because this will help them to stick. And also if you're putting a solution of glue on afterwards, that'll certainly help. Well, I've been working the bowl for about 10 minutes. I'm really pleased with it. So I'm going to turn off the light again so you can have a little look. There it is. It's still damp, so I'm just going to be careful. But look at that, you can see all those fibres just showing through there. It looks really pretty. There we are. And you'd open the, um, the lights out inside if you're displaying it properly. But that's lovely. And although it's quite fluffy at the moment, if you do put the, um, uh, the glue and water mix on, you'll find that it becomes um, a little bit shinier as well and, and definitely more sturdy. So that's the one that we've just made there. I'll put the light back on. You can see that the one I made before, I don't know if you can hear that, it's a lot more sturdy. So if you do the glue, let it dry and then continue working it with the spoon like that. And that will also stick those fibres down more. So there it is. And that one will definitely be coming out at Christmas. I hope you enjoyed making it. And don't forget to get in touch with your pictures of your designs. And if you've got any questions. So it's Teasdale Felt. Uh, www.teasdalefelt.co.uk